nowhere better to start a Cotswold journey than the historic market town of Fairford, lying some ten miles to the east of Cirencester. Pride of place here is the 15th century church of St Mary, built by John Tame, a cloth merchant. There are 28 beautiful windows here containing almost 1,000 figures and said to be amongst the best known medieval glass in the country. As many people could not read, John Tang wished to make the windows tell the Bible story in pictures. Outside again and close by is the former mill, now a domestic residence, sitting quietly on the banks of the River Cone. This is an ideal location for fishing. The river contains many rainbow trout, but now there is one less, but one very happy fisherman. East of Fairford we find Buscot House. This National Trust property contains the Farringdon collection of paintings and furniture. The extensive wall grounds contain much of interest for the visitor. A stroll around the many acres of parkland and gardens will be very rewarding, as there is much to see. As well as trees, shrubs, statues and fountains, water features play an important part of the Buscot landscape. There are three lakes in the grounds, this being the largest and very popular with wildfowl, and a pleasant spot for us to relax. Just north of Buscot, we find Camscot Manor, the country home of William Morris until his death in 1896. The house contains a collection of the works of Morris, including furniture, textiles, carpets and ceramics. But the gardens are also proving to be very popular with the many Japanese tourists here this afternoon. The many herbaceous borders, which are to be found here, offer an area of comparative peace and tranquility and are well worth exploring. There is much to be seen and enjoyed by the gardening fraternity. We could not leave Camscott without paying a visit to the ancient church, not far from the manor house. It is, like most of these Cotswold churches, steeped in history. William Morris is buried in the grounds. Just south of Sarancester we discover the Cotswold Water Park. Here is just one of the 133 lakes in this area formed after the extraction of gravel. They cover 40 square miles and are still growing. As well as the wildfowl, there are lots of wildflowers and plants to be enjoyed here. For those who wish to take to the water, there are endless opportunities with the sailing clubs. Tuition is available for the less experienced, but these young sailors seem to be very accomplished. But if the thought of sail power is not for you, then why not paddle your own canoe? No Cotswold journey would be complete without a look at this beautiful church in Down Ampney, lying just five miles east of the Cotswold Water Park, in the quiet and peaceful countryside. Our visit today coincides with a small exhibition celebrating the life and music of the composer Ray Vaughan Williams, who was born in the adjoining vicarage. Also here, a reminder of the bravery and courage of David Lord, V.C., who died in his Dakota aircraft over Arnhem in September 1944. His flight took off from the nearby airfield as part of Operation Market Garden. September 2004, as 60 years after a bridge too far at Arnhem, these old soldiers returned to Dine Empty Church for their annual service of remembrance. Many of their colleagues were killed, wounded or taken prisoner by the Germans. For many, a time of recollection and memories of former days and their friends who died in Holland, 
all those years ago as they fought to capture the bridges on the River Rhone. The church is filled for the service, and now is the time to pay tribute to fallen comrades. They shall not grow old, as we that are left grow old. Now to Miserton House, said to have been built from the ruins of a normal castle. Traces of the original mound can still be found in the grounds. It has long history too, as some 300 royalists defended it and its extensive grounds during the Civil War over 350 years ago. However, all signs of war are far from one's mind, as the beauty of the woodlands are unfolded during our war. And there are, of course, many other objects and items of interest to attract our attention before we continue on our journey. Not too many miles west of Miserton lies Prinish Abbey. Our visit today coincides with the feast of Corpus Christi and the annual procession of the monks and the congregation with the consecrated host, a very solemn occasion. The monks are of the Benedictine order. It was in 1927 that the order transferred from Cawley Island of Tenby in South Wales to Prinish. For those interested in golf, the Cotswolds offers many challenging courses and opportunities to play. This course, Cotswold Hills at Eldenwood, is one such. But first a little putting practice to determine the speed of the green. Then it's off they go, full of high hopes, ahead three and a half miles of golf course and a pleasant morning ahead. The Cotswolds are renowned for their gentle hills, steep valleys and woodlands. Here at Cranham we are fortunate to have all of these. In the summer months the area is a popular site for many varieties of butterflies. The marble white being one of the most common species here today. Insects to abound. The day flying scarlet brunet moth being ever present and appears to have a particular liking for the flower of the knapweed. Wild flowers are here too. Of course they are the key to the numerous butterfly types and the other insects we have seen. They are the first steps in the great ecological chain. No wild flowers means no butterflies, no insects, and therefore no birds. How important it is to protect them for future generations. It's been a long day. Time to sit down and relax at the butcher's arms at Sheep School and let England's glory ladies Mars entertain us and bring our Cotswold journey to a close.